Good day everyone, I am Jan Lubisi Adessa of ESPD 2 c and in this video, we, the fertilization, we're going to discuss the process of fertilization and the important or the special events that occurs during fertilization. But before we start, let me give you an insight or an overview about our topic. So, fertilization can be defined as the union of two haploid amines. When we say haploid, it is the half of the number of chromosomes or just 23 chromosomes only. So, when the two gametes unite during fertilization, it will create a total number of 46 chromosomes and now called diploid. So, next is the spermatozoa and the oocytes. Spermatozoa refers to the sperm cell, while oocytes is here to refer to as an egg. So to restore the diploid state to form a cycle through the process called egg activation, the end commence or undergo a series of mitotic division that results in the cell differentiation and um, the development of an embryo. And here is our objectives. So at the end of the unit, we will be able to define fertilization, describe its process, and explain capacitation and of course its importance. And lastly, we summarize the events that occurs as a sperm fertilizes an oocyte. So to have a better understanding about these topics, um, let's have my group mates to discuss it for us. I hope that you will go into learn a lot from this video and you will enjoy and be inspired for our today's discussion. Again, I am John Luis Adesas and thank you. Good day everyone, I am Mary Jess Alvarina of Vicent Tusi and now I am going to discuss the fertilization in its journey. So fertilization. The fusion of the sperm cell nucleus with the egg cell nucleus to produce a zygote or fertilized egg. Brings mainly female gametes together to produce the blood cycle. So when we say fertilization, this is the union of the egg and the sperm. It is results in the production of a single diploid called the zygote. It also contains all of the genetic materials needed to form a human half from the mother and half from the father. It also activates the egg, triggering the beginning of the embryonic development. So once inside the female reproductive tract, sperm use their tail-like appendages to swim for the egg. A chemical signal around the egg called the progesterone was boost the sperm's movements into a hypermotile state. These tail movements become stronger and able to generate more swimming force. Now, let's proceed to the journey of fertilization. The journey of a fertilized in a woman, in mammals, eggs are released by the ovaries. If an egg meets a sperm cell, it may become fertilized. The fertilized egg travels to the uterus, where it grows and develops into a new individual. Fertilization usually takes place in a fallopian tube that links an ovary to the uterus. If the fertilized egg successfully travels down the fallopian tube and implants in the uterus, an embryo starts growing. After a sperm cell comes into contact with the outer layers of an egg cell, the acrosome, which is a prominence at the anterior tip of the spermatozoa, undergoes a series of well-defined structural changes that opens a path for the sperm to face. During their passage through the female genital tract of mammals, spermatozoa undergo physiological change called capacitation, which are prerequisite for their participation in the fertilization. They are able to undergo the acrosome reaction, traverse the egg envelopes, and reach the interior of the, of the egg. Dispersal of cells in the outer egg 
and the loop corona radiata is caused by the action of an enzyme that breaks down a substance binding corona radiata cells together. And that would be all and the next reporter would be Ma'am Altai. So the process of fertilization Sperm preparation, sperm egg recognition and binding, sperm egg fusion and fusion of sperm egg and egg prenuclei and activation of the cycle. So first, ejaculated sperm are not ready to fertilize an egg when they are in the vagina. In response to the dilution of semen in the vagina, they undergo several changes which are collectively known as capacitation. So, ang capacitation is yung period ng time that the sperm must reside in the female reproductive tract before they acquire the ability to fertilize or oxide. Then the second one, sperm egg recognition and binding. As the sperm egg approach, they bind to the zona pellucida, so ito nga yung process na tinatawag na sperm binding. This triggers the acrosome reaction in which the enzymes of the acrosome are free. This enzyme then begin to digest the zona pellucida and allow the sperm to tunnel towards the egg plasma membrane. So, pag na-reach na ng sperm cell yung egg cell, the plasma membranes of the two cells fuse together and then the sperm release its genetic material into the egg. So, the third one is the sperm egg fusion. So, fusion of the male and female gamete. The process involves the fusion of an ooxide with a sperm. Nagka-create siya ng single diploid soil known as zygote, from which a new individual or organism will develop. And last, the fusion of sperm and egg pronuclei and activation of the zygote. The immediate events after fertilization include the egg's effort to prevent polysperm. Polysperm refers to the fertilization of the baby by more than one sperm, resulting in zygotes with greater than a diploid amount of DNA. So, this causes early embryonic defects and arrest of development. After sperm egg fusion, the egg mounts the critical reaction to prevent polysperm. In all eggs residing just under the plasma membrane, there are membrane-bound vesicles known as cortical granules. Hi, I'm Kida Fanel from Descent QC. So, the next topic that we will tackle is all about events of fertilization. So, the, um, the first event that happened is the sperm egg association. So, spermatozoa's acrosome response is preconditioned to a sperm and egg combination caused by their plasma membranes fusing. So, when a sperm comes in contact with an egg, a series of well-defined structural changes occurs to the acrosome which is prominent at the anterior of the sperm. So the next event that would happen is the specificity of a sperm and egg interaction. So fertilization is strictly species specific and the pellucida of and the area pellucida of the um, egg covering place is significant um, part in binding between a sperm and the egg. So overall the biochemical species zona vary from that of another species therefore um, only match and bind with the sperm of the species is concerned. The next event that would happen is the prevention of polysperm. So protection from the penetration of eggs over one sperm or what we call the polysperm is in um, some eggs is attributable to some of the egg surface properties. So, although other eggs are responsible. So, some eggs have, a, um, have the capacity to produce a polysperm response inhibiting rearrangement of the egg surface during maturation or what we call the oogenesis. Good day everyone, I'm Annie Grace and Balagtas from BZ 2 c For today's video, I will continue the discussion in events of fertilization, formation of the fertilization membrane. An immediate response to the fertilization is the rising of a membrane called vitalin membrane from the egg surface. In the beginning, the membrane is very thin. Soon, however, it 
significance develop a well-organized molecular structure and is called the fertilization membrane. At the same time, an extensive rearrangement of the molecular structure of the egg surface occurs. The events leading to the formation of the fertilization membrane required about one minute. At the point on the outer surface of the sea urchin egg at which a spermatozoa one attached the thin vitaline membrane become detached. As a result, the membranes of the cortical granules come into contact with the inner aspect of the egg's plasma membrane and fuse with it. The granules open and their contents are extruded into the previvitaline space, the space between the egg surface and the raised vitaline membrane. Lastly, formation of the zygote membrane. After its entry in the egg cytoplasm, the spermatozoa nucleus now called the male chronicles begin to swell and its chromosomal materials disappears and become similar in appearance to that of the female pronucleus. All through the membranous envelope surrounding the male pronucleus rapidly disintegrates in the egg. A new envelope promptly forms around it. The male pronucleus, which rotates 180 degrees and moves toward the egg nucleus, initially is accompanied by two structures or centroids that function in cell division. So after that male and female pronuclei have, be, have come into contact, the spermatozoal centroids give rise to the first cleavage spindle, which precedes division of the fertilized egg. In some cases, fusion of the two pronuclei may occur by a process of membrane fusion. In this process, two adjoining membranes fuse at the point of contact to give rise to the continuous nuclear envelope that surrounds the zygote nucleus. The next reporter will be Mr. Cepeda. Hello everyone, my name is Kizor and Cepeda and I am from BZ2C and today I will guide you through the topic number 4 which is the contact between sperm and oocyte. So first of all we have upon ovulation the oocyte released by the ovary is swept into and along the uterine tube. So pagkatapos na makuha na yung, or magawa na yung oocyte, pupunta na siya sa uterine tube and then fertilization must occur in the distal uterine tube because an unfertilized oocyte cannot survive the 72-hour journey to the uterus. So, hindi daw siya makakapagpunta sa uterus without being fertilized. So, in order for a oocyte to survive, it needs to be fertilized first. And dun kasi gagawin yung uh, development ng fetus or yung baby. Next, we have the uh, corona radiata. This is the outer layer of follicular or granulosa cells that form around the developing oocyte in the ovary and remain with it upon ovulation. So this is the first layer or the first contact of sperm and oocyte. So ito yung pinaka outer layer ng oocyte. So the underlying zone of the lucida or and pellucid means transparent is a transparent but thick glycoprotein membrane that surrounds the cell's plasma membrane. So this is the last um, layer that the sperm has to go through in order to get inside the very main or the uh, plasma membrane para magfertilize the egg. So, what happens when it's uh, fertilized? So, magkakaroon tayo ng zygote. Recall that at a point of fertilization, the oocyte has not yet completed meiosis. So, ito yung stage of reproducing or splitting up. So, all secondary oocytes remain arrested in metaphase. So, masastop daw siya muna sa metaphase of meiosis 2 until fertilization. So, ito na, naging, fertil naging fertilized na siya dahil meron ng sperm na nakapasok sa oocyte. So, only upon fertilization does the oocyte complete meiosis. So, ito na. The unneeded complement of genetic material 
that results is stored in a second polar body that is eventually ejected. So this is the uh, second body, yung baby, or yung fetus, or yung zygote. So, recap, um, yung una, magkakaroon ng hundreds of sperm na magsasurround sa oocyte. And yung una niya mag-contact is yung um, is yung corona radiata, which is your first layer. And then, when they dig inside the uh, corona radiata, tapos pag nagka-contact na sila sa um, zona pellucida, magkakaroon ng secretion ng ating uh, oocyte. And then, because of that secretion, mag-react yung sperm, and then the sperm releases something that destroys or disintegrates the uh, first layer in order to burrow more into the oocyte. Ano, pag na-burrow na nang na-burrow, mag-choose ng isa ang oocyte. Tapos yung sperm na chinus is mag-re-release ng kanyang nucleus. A single sperm succeeds in burrowing through the corona radiata and zona pellucida and making contact with the oocyte's plasma membrane, which is the bare needle. The sperm's plasma membrane fuses with that of the oocyte and the sperm releases its nucleus into the cytoplasm of the oocyte. Therefore, it will fertilize and then it will create the zygote and create life, a baby. So that is all for the number four topic and I will see you in the next video. Bye!